Okay, so this is for uh, the Counseling 640 class, the assessment class, and what we want to look at is uh, we're going to start looking at normal distribution, and to do that I want to look at using the short grit scale, uh, which was uh, developed by uh, Duckworth and colleagues, Angela Duckworth and colleagues. And just to give a sense of how this will work, um, let's assume that we have given this to a large sample and that we've, uh, we have taken measures to try to make sure that we have um, similar ethnicities as to the uh, latest census population. So if it's um, uh, I, I don't know what the latest census population was. It may have been that there were 10% uh, considered uh, Latino or Latina, um, uh, maybe 15% African American. I'm not certain the exact numbers, but let's say that we've given it to a sample where we've tried to include ethnicities that match what we have um, here in the U.S. And we've got a large sample. And so what we would do uh, to start plotting the highest score on the short grit scale is five, which grit, by the way, is indicating a persistence of effort. Um, so that's what that's indicating. And the lowest score would be one. So high, if somebody scored five on the grit scale, this is somebody who really um, puts a lot of effort and persists with a project until completion. Somebody with one would be somebody who would um, lose interest early, give up on it when it gets difficult, and so forth. Okay, so and so we've got this range here, and so let's say you've got um, that all the papers, you've got all the scores of this sample that we have, and you start calling them out to me, and then I'm going to start to plot them, and uh, if, so for instance, let's say you say, all right, the first one scored a uh, three. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to put that there. And then you start calling them out more. All right, we had somebody score a two. And we had somebody else score a three. And then we had somebody else score a four. And then somebody a five. And then we just keep on doing this and keep on plotting these. And uh, as, as you're calling them out, I'm just plotting the score. And it is possible with the grid scale that we would have a 2.5 or a 3 point whatever, but just to keep it simple, I'm just going to plot it as such. So we go through the entire sample, and we've got a really large sample, so we've got a lot of data points. And I'm just going to put a few up here so it'll make a little sense. Okay. Um, and maybe I'll take that one away, and maybe I'll take this one away just to make it a little easier. So what we've done is we've plotted them. These are our number of scores. Okay, We had this many people uh, score three. We had this many people score five, and this many one, and so forth. Now, what can be helpful, whether we want to plot that as a, a frequency polygon or a histogram, it just depends um, on the shape. But what can be, uh, or on what we, how we want to visualize it, um, what we do want to, what is, can be helpful at this time is to approximate a curve uh, to our sample here. And I, what we're looking at here, if we were to approximate a curve, we would come. And we may have something that looks like what we would consider a normal curve. Now, I don't know if that's the case with the grit scale, um, but we do know that with, uh, you know, from large samples that have been taken throughout the years, we do know that things such as IQ, height, and weight, for instance, do approximate what we would call a normal curve, uh, the bell-shaped curve, as you've heard it indicating that we've got more here in the mid-range, we've got fewer that scored uh, were really high, and fewer that scored really low. Okay, So then th this can become handy for us uh, later as we talk more.